Kokka, number 29 is Mirto Apostolidi, and 41 is Eleonora Yakehi. There was a call for one minute before the game. So, for the Connecticut Makers playing in white from the USA. Okay, game has started. I'll say the list afterwards. Or in the middle. Um, we have a so Makers got to the ball first, attacking yes. the Firenze basket. Good fast attack. Coming from a close side. Trying to play around the basket. Really wanting to get in there, but we have a nice defense from Italy. So circulating the ball. So lost the ball now. Back a few meters around the basket. I have the four checker. Yes. Two players from Firenze Getting grabbing the ball, scrum. fighting with, against uh, Elena Pleto, I think. So I have surface scrum. And the ball is coming back to the basket with a lot of speed. O open side and back to the midfield. Another attack by Makers on the close side. So we have seen the first minute um, really strong playing at the Firenze basket but they're trying to set up a good defense so Makers couldn't break through yet and we right now have a scrum in the middle uh, Firenze trying to get past uh, some Makers players um, but we're still in the scrum now we see nicely uh, one player down there and we're at the Mako baskets trying to attack but there's only one blue player down and the second one positioning herself at the basket a little bit far away and it was a goal was the goal no the referee looked like he signaled the goal but it was not one so mm -hmm. counter attack by the makers they got the ball back and attacking caught in midfield by Metropo Solidi here and again, some surface play. Negos attacking back in the Firenze half. And at the basket was no defender on time. She's struggling to position herself very well. One against one. That's a close call, trying to pull away the goalie, but she managed to stay on the goal. There he comes, the substitution for her. Now had Anita Rigi was uh, fighting for the basket. Yeah. I think right now it's an equal game. We see good attacks from Mako, we see a good defense from Firenze and sometimes Firenze is managing to break through to get to the middle to the pool. Trying to... So now we have an attack from the back but we have a goalie who turned and we have a scrum at the surface again. So both teams are actually grabbing onto the ball quite a lot. When they are get into difficulty or when they try to go for the ball, they just grab onto the other yes. player. And uh, so sometimes now Fidenz is intending to get away from the basket. Makers are grabbing into her and back at the surface. And I think this game, I know that Makers plays a lot on the surface. Yes. Fidenz a bit less, I think. Yeah, but we see them nicely. Um, co accompanying each other, no Mako player there, and that's but they set up the defense already. But there's this is Valentina no Nikini now. Yes. The captain has the ball, passing to Thea. She passed right over the defense, which is always a little bit dangerous. So that's why we have a scrum at the surface again. One of the Mako player got hold of the ball. And they're fighting for ball possession, very close to the um, Mako basket. Fidente has the ball, has here Claudia Ricci trying to score, passing to Stefania Koga, back to Claudia Ricci. No, Valentina Nikini has the ball now, it there almost was, was a goal. Close call. That was three players, one after the other, yes. intending to score. So they had a really, really nice wave attack here. 
established wave attacks mean so you have one wave of players coming in trying to attack on the second and we have a referee call or not no it's surface play Sur surface crumb yeah. against the wall nicely dominating in the the no, ball the fell top. there was no player there but two italian players Getting down there really fast. Valentina Anikin is going uh, attacking one against three Mako players. Passing back to Claudia Ricci. So two goalkeepers here attacking one after the other. So I really try. That's opposite is here attacking the basket from the top. Passing the ball down to her teammate. And that was a goal, goal by Cristina Papadopoulou for Firenze. Very, very nice play by the Italian team. Yeah, so it <laughs> played out very well that they were taking in waves and getting in there and not lacking the confidence. So it was a really nice play from Firenze, but Mexicos also had their chances at the Firenze basket. Um, yes, but this is... See that we're doing a lot of surface play yes. and when the ball fell there was no Mexicos player down. We had two Firenze players going yes. directly for the ball, but the makers did not go down. They went back into defense afterwards, but it, you should go down and go for the ball when it's down. True. Yeah, that's a great opportunity actually to, to get the ball and the opponent. There was a fast attack from Makos, but uh, Firenze made it there in time on the basket to defend. And they're trying to get to the middle line, but recovering from Makos who are now trying to establish the attack, but really, did you saw that she was really dragging the ball there's right out. defense left, there was a change, that I think there be, was now... That could be a goal, there's the, the goal is left and stolen from one of the make players, let's see what happens. But, if Firenze got the ball, uh, in ball possession. now we have uh, Tia's kill starts going towards the basket, passing to Irene Vicenzo. Try to score. No, Virginia, sorry. <laughs> They're really trying to get in there. But we are just crumb in the middle of the pool again at the surface. And there's no one down. Now there comes players. She passes to. You know who she was? This is Stefania Koga passing now back. Uh, Thea Skillset has the ball, uh, Valentina Nikini is waiting on the other side. I think that's Valentina. Mm. They're really nicely setting up another attack um, in waves at the Mako basket, but there's always missing one player. They're not nicely playing around the basket, but that what happens. So now she can ride into one of the Mako um, players. And we now again, I think, in a scrum at the surface, going through the middle of the field. Italia is uh, Italy is back in ball position on the close side in the corner, trying to establish an attack. The Italians are not losing the ball. They're not. They're not really going in at this point, but uh, the makers are yes grabbing onto the ball, trying to get them away from their basket. But the Italians are really attacking in waves. The ball fell, yes. holding three. without ball three 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 three. for Firenze. So the game, we have a question, who won Hesu against AG1? Hesu won. 1-0 one. One for Hesu, yeah. So Thea Skjelstad leading the free throw. So we have another scrum going up to the surface. So you really were right, the Makos are really going up to the surface to play there. Um, one of the Italians is just underneath it, ready to catch the ball. It really it really disturbs the rhythm of the team. If if the other team is always grabbing onto you, it disturbs your style of, of play. Especially if you're used to passing and not a lot of, of scrums because your players and your defenders, like the, your, the role of your players, your style is completely blocked. It mobilizes a lot of your players and 
it's very disconcerting can uh, destroy yes. your tactics and you need always to have someone under baskets here you see the Italians had a player down got the ball it was caught by the makers but the makers were dominating at the beginning of the game you could have said they're they're more yes. offensive they're more but the end, now they're doing it. the defensive yes. Defense so by surface scrums, yes. So we're now in halftime here uh, at the 37th game of the Champions Cup in underwater rugby in Berlin, transmitting from Temple Hope live and direct. So before we didn't have time to read the player list for the makers, so we're playing in white for from Connecticut in the USA. We have number one Laura Bedoya, number two Maria Abril. Four Isabella Bedoya, six Samantha Hernandez, eight Daniela Bedoya, thirteen Natasha Samaniego, twenty Elena Prieto, twenty-four Alejandra Carmona, twenty-eight Mabel Rivadeneira, thirty-two Marilyn Cardenas, thirty-seven Giovanna Reynoso, and sixteen Ashley Granda. So you have three Bedoya. You have three Bedoyas. This is a family affair. We have uh, Gaul Pierce from Nicole Pelusio, who is also used to go out plays for it Italy normally. And we see right now Mako's relaxing, trying to catch some air. We have both teams now yes. talking with their coaches and the captains. Jamaica's Amoria is catching the air and Firenze is now getting a briefing by their coach, Andrea Meneghin, on the other side. And they always have also another of the men's players in the water reporting on then what's happening to the coach. It's an interesting game. Let's let's see how it evolves if uh, one of the teams managed to reach yes. take the high hand. Now Firenze is winning 1-0. So I guess Makos will try to play a bit faster, a bit more aggressive. Maybe Mako comes in with a new strategy, just catch, catch some air. And there's... Um, yes. So I think that Makos only has uh, three players on the bench. Yes. Three subs. Yes. And so the referee is coming towards them. I four think actually. They just have 10 yes. players. I feel like they are 12 now. I don't know, for me it's a, it's a mental thing. If at the halftime a team is also doing a huddle and yes. shouting again, it's more positive or you have more energy coming in and than if you just sit around and everybody's in their head. But True. it's a different team technique and psychology, it of depends, course. It depends, yeah. So, second half time is about to start. Make us make the ball clearly first. Tackled by the Italians. Trying to get through the basket. We are in the middle still. And now in the corner, closed open side now from Makos trying to get through with their three Italian players stopping the attack slowing it down and now we have an attack from the close side so we can't quite see it but there are a lot of plays down there so the ball is coming up one of the Firenze players, three Firenze players uh, one is counter-attacking now passing to her teammate Number two, Anita Rigi, tackled and taken up to the surface by the makers. And that's a referee call. A call of the referee for holding on to apparently the swimsuit by the makers. Free throw for Firenze. <laughs> Nicely trying to establish a wave of attacks here with three people going in around the basket, but Mako tracked them up in a scrum again at the surface. Um, 
you see nicely lying underneath players in case the ball drops you can pass them down um, Mako still staying in the defense quite good but now they broke through and the ball dropped holding without ball free throw for Makos it felt I don't know you but it looked a bit like she dropped the ball on purpose yes she was tackled by two players and she just dropped it because the others be. didn't have time yes. to to realize that she had dropped the ball it can be a technique there is some you can say that you're falling on, on purpose I don't think that was a case though hope not Another scrum at the surface. I got getting the ball, trying to get in Elena there. Prieto, number 20, attacking. She's a very strong player. With one of the Bedoyas taking the ball, circulating it back. Another scrum at the surface, moving towards the Mako side of the pool. And one of the Makos got grip of the ball. So I think they're really getting into the second half a little bit stronger and more confident to play uh, at the Firenze basket, trying to establish an attack, playing out of the corner of the coast side. But see, before she was at the surface, she had the ball, she, uh, she was free and she did not dive, she kept on swimming at the surface, so then she got tackled at the surface again. Yes. And she could have gone down and played more freely. It's another kind, it's another game. Yes. I think. And now, okay, the ball fell down. One of the Firenze attackers got it. Tia Skilstad has it now. Passing in the back to one of her teammates. Counter attack, not the fastest, but getting to the ball on the closed side now. Okay, Valentina Nikini grabbing the goalie who got to hold of the ball. Makos counter attacking from the open side, moving around the basket. Trying to establish another attack. So the defender got the ball, passes down to the other defender actually who swims out. Tried to pass to one of her teammates on the water, got intercepted by one of the makers. Yes. Was not as, the pass was not strong enough, a bit, a bit too far. So they're really more at the Firenze basket right now. Firenze isn't moving so far away and isn't so strong in attacking anymore. They're more right now defending, trying to get prep off the ball and getting into attack. See here another scrum going up to the surface, but they're right now missing one player down there. We have to say the passes of the of the makers they're um, stronger and more closer together. And closer together, the the better um, aimed. The aim is better than the ones of the Firenze players. Then in Firenze you have two players have been who started playing in September. I know. So oh, we, we have so, some very new players playing for Firenze. So that well. is quite an experience for them. It's first tournament. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, a Champions Cup, uh, the club winners of each country play here, so we have the club winner of Italy, that's Firenze, and the makers from Connecticut, USA. And they're right now at a really tense scrum in the middle of the pool, slightly towards the Firenze basket still and passing to the um, makers still in ball possession trying to get through. There wasn't somebody of Firenze down there, which we saw in the first half really nice. There are almost um, roughly three and a half minutes left to play. And we're at another scrum at the surface. And 
see there's always missing like we had before people laying down there from Firenze right now I see nobody under the scrum and we have another attack wave from Makos towards the Firenze basket if they continue to not get into ball position and getting and now they have uh, ball position as Firenze trying to get past the middle line towards the basket of the Makos Counter attack. But it's also hard to get uh, to yes. wait under surface scrum if your attacker is yes. already involved in the scrum. Then you are still and it's over your own basket. You need to have your defender and your yes, goalie there. Truly. So it's, this is very hard. But like the makers have, uh, they're technically I think they're they're faster and have better passes. But I think uh, Firenze is physically stronger. Yes, and they can hold them away from their baskets. I think yeah. that's, uh, that's, that's where that's the main advantages of the teams lie. Yeah. Because if you see the counter-attacks of Firenze, they're not very fast. No. They're, and the makers are way faster yeah. at counter-attacking. So now the, the player is attacking with quite some speed. And she went up, passed down, passed down again. Trying to get into the Firenze basket. Um, they're really managing nicely to play around the basket, tiring a little bit of Firenze down. Maybe that's why they're not so passing, counter-attacking, but now the goalie has the ball trying to go, but we're still in ball position for White. Now we have a call, and that's for some... It looks like it will be a two-minute call. The referee is pointing, one, pointing at one of the players. So it looks like it will be a free throw for Makos. There is one minute and a half left. We hadn't had to find any timeout from Firenze. Now we have a timeout from Makos. Trying to catch some breath. Um, So Makos has now a minute and 20 seconds to, to score yes. and to actually score two goals if they want to not to go to penalties because here we don't have for the first time, I oh know it's not group phase anymore, anyway you need no, to, in any phase you, anyway you need, you need uh, to have a clear winner, Yes. so there will be penalty shootout. And there is one player in the water on the Firenze side, so I don't know. If it's a penalty shoot, if there is a penalty now, or as one player gets benched <laughs> from Firenze, got a two-minute penalty. So I think they sent to number 29 out. I think with the It but looks like no, it's a free throw. It's no penalty here. No, it's a free throw, but uh, one player got a two-minute suspension. And, and we have a stolen basket from. Makos the Firenze side. Firenze has not realized that they have no one down. It wasn't started, I think. They just... Yeah, but you can also go down and steal the basket before it starts, and that's when you have a free throw against you, you really should watch out, because yes. they don't steal your basket. Especially in a situation like that, when it's power play. Also, a one point. minute and 15 seconds left, so the time stopped here. Normally we have a uh, continuing time in these matches. The referees are talking, talking. about something. <laughs> yes. So, so right now the teams can catch. Ah, the time for the two minutes didn't run. I think maybe. We didn't but anyway, the player for the two minutes is there is less than two minutes left now on the yes. clock. So anyway, the player stays until the end of the game. She stays out. True. Which is interesting that they took they put a defender out actually. Yes. Especially when you're in a situation like that where you really have to make sure that they don't score against you. I uh, so would we personally have, have taken an yes. attacker out and have my defense as solid as possible. So fast attack from Makos. They have one minute left to score one goal to maybe go into penalty shootout. They're swarming the basket. Oh, that's a close one. And one of the uh, the defender got a call off the ball. 
passing it to one of the team players. Now we have a scrum at the surface, moving towards the middle. Yes, Ooh, so the Mavis Bears now came everything. very fast back to Firenze basket. Firenze grabbing onto the ball again, trying to counter-attack. So we have Teas Kilstad now swimming away from the basket, dragging two players with her. Mako's got the ball again. 26 seconds left. Passing forward. The defenders are here in position. There is no defending for checker and this is really where Fidenza should have three players under water. Okay, they have the goal. Six seconds left. Three, two. Yeah, and that would have been a good attack, but now time is over, so first game for Firenze to win. First uh, no first win, yes. So one zero for the Italian team against the Connecticut Makers. Very well played. they very they were under attack a lot and yes. uh, scored the really fun the one moment and the uh, Makers defense are the one weakness and they went for it and they scored and they're really even now with the power play at the end. They didn't give up and they really defend very well. The makers played also very well. A bit too much surface play for my taste, but that's a personal thing. That's yes. uh, that's not how we play in my team in Graz. We, we try to avoid that. But then it's, you use what you know. Yes. Yes, that's your technique. So right that's your strength. Yeah. So right now saw uh, the critics of the player, which happens after every game. And... Um, um, Lorena, Lorena wollte, Thorsten, Lorena wollte mit mir moderieren. Okay, so now we have the players from, um, who's warming up? Helvetia is uh, warming up for the next game against Barcelona, against Barcelona so women's game. So I think that uh, Lorena will come in now. This time I'm I'm away from good for good. See you tonight, Annika, and uh, and thank you, Lisa, dear public of the Champions Cup. Thank you for listening to us and thank you for watching to the 119 people connected right now and everyone who's watching throughout the day. And uh, until next year. Okay. Um. So I'm just starting reading the team lists. So here we have the Helvetia team list for number five is playing Cecily Merkle, number six is Andrea Vanessa uh, Urtado um, Kiseno, number seven is Helena Hay, number nine is uh, Irene Kaiser, number ten is Judith Buchli, number twelve is Oda Wiegen, number fourteen is Simone Büßler, number seventeen is Anna Suetinova, number 21 is Miriam Ragosnik, number 22 is Ellen Reif, number 33 is Tamara Calvetti, number 42 is Katrin Heyerli, number 46 is Miriam Fuchs, number 81 is Isabel Morgenstern, known as Isa. And for the Barcelona woman we have number 3 is Elia Santa Maria, number 6 is Aida Pairo, number 7 is Paula Moreno, number 11 is uh, Carol Villalba, number 12 is Alicenda Andres, number um, 14 is Carla Galano, number 17 is Karina Tessas, number 20 is Iris Balcazar, number 21 is Mar Pozo, number 23 is Sylvia Miranda, number 55 is Alicia Garcia, number 77 is Ines de Gregorio, and number 83 is Giovanna Bautista. So I think it will also be uh, a hungry game for a win of Barcelona. I think they really want to win this game. They lost uh, against uh, Vienna girls earlier. And we have to change the names in the uh, up at the screen. There it says goals against Budovice. That's slightly wrong. And I think it will be a quite tough game and a tight game both teams already had games today so I think they will try they they are tired and are trying to win. So the underwater referees is getting ready there the second one comes in but the ball got loose so they have to 
adjust the ball again so they can start from the middle and the girls are all ready in white, in white we have Hervetia and in blue we have Barcelona do we have anybody watching from Switzerland or Freiburg here in the live chat? Say a big hello to them and also to the ones watching for Barcelona. We have Aris is here again and then we have Colombo who is watching all day because he unfortunately can't be here with us today. He normally plays also for Barcelona and but he lives in Mayotte which is by Madagascar and they apparently don't have a team. So he always watching it to relive the feelings of Champions Cup here. That's the call for one minute. One minute till the game. So we see Helvetia dive again just to get depth and the vision of the pool. They're trying here to coming up and one of the referees is back at the side of the pool, maybe trying to think. Um, can we please switch the names? This is the four, four names in the screen. Please switch it to Barcelona and Helvetia.